Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. My name's Jason, also known as Vapes and Games, and we're here inside Diablo 4. And as you can tell by the tone of my voice, today is a good day. And I would love to share with you some of the great and amazing changes that have been brought forward in season four of Diablo, which I'm kind of nicknaming the, the the launch of Diablo 4. I think up until this point, we've been in early access. We've been playing sort of an alpha stroke beta, and I just don't feel that the game was in a good state or ready for launch. And I truly believe that the Diablo 4 sort of came into its own with this patching update and i truly feel now it feels like a completely different game more complete and i've been playing the rogue which i was a demon hunter in the last diablo game diablo 3 and i kind of felt ranged rogues in this game were a little bit shitty um i have played other classes which i've, I've just deleted all my characters uh started afresh this season because I just feel that they're all worth replaying. Uh, the, the changes are so wide. We're going to get into the game anyway. And we're going to have a little bit of a talk about some of the new mechanics and the balancing and whatnot. Now, obviously, take it with a pinch of salt. I'm not max level. I'll just show you my character here. So... We're going to discuss a few things in this video about why I feel Diablo 4 is now hashtag D4 good and not hashtag D4 bad. What makes this game better now? So we're going to start off with the core, the, the meat and potatoes of the game. So the general loot changes. So they've removed unused affixes and what I'd call bad affixes and done a little bit of housekeeping. It's now easier to understand what the affixes do. Uh, many changes in wording and how they're listed. Further complexity has now been moved to the crafting system. If we just take a look at an item here, you can see, obviously, rogues work on dexterity, like barbs work on strength. Mages work on intellect. I'm not sure what necromancers use, but you get the general idea. Every class has a core stat. So with that being said, now gear is very, very easy to understand. And it gives you a length and breadth of new possibilities and choices. So when I'm leveling up now, I may get a helmet. So for instance, we're just going to look at the core stats here. So we've got the item power level. Very straightforward. The border tells us what level of gear it is. So it's legendary. We have the armor value, which is sort of... You'd have to look it up, but you can mouse over. So, for instance, if you go to the stats and whatnot, you can look at what each stat does. So, dexterity increases skill damage, uh, increases dodge chance. Willpower increases healing, increases overpower damage. Intellect, critical strike chance, resist to all elements. Strength, uh, resource generation and armor. And we've got our base resistances here. So armor reduces incoming physical damage taken. This applies to both direct physical damage and bleeding damage over time. Cannot reduce more than 85% of incoming physical damage from a level 44 enemy. You have 2,563 armor from primary equipment and stats, 110 armor from strength and 530 bonus armor from other sources. Straight to the point, tells you exactly what it does. To basically anything that's hitting you, uh, like a spear or a bow and arrow or an auto attack that's not augmented with ele elemental damage. It's quite an important stat in Diablo and does give you rather a lot of damage reduction, especially in the earlier levels. And then obviously they stack very nicely with your other resist. But as you look at the item now, so we've got our basic armor level. We've got dexterity, so we've got 44. It also shows what the possible roll could have been on the item. So between 43 and 50, so it is on the lower end. 16 life per second regen very straightforward plus one to imbuement skill that's one of the skills that i've got so it gives us an extra level in it and then i've got a passive on it because it's legendary after casting five basic skills one of your our basic skill generators 
your active cooldowns are reduced by 1.4 seconds, which is a good roll because it can roll between 1 and 1.5. And the list goes on. So this one's got Dexter A, uh, energy per second regen. Uh, this is quite a posh item. It's a unique... Uh, it's not an uber unique, but it's a unique. So basically, this has more affixes. So the yellow items have two. Legendary have three. And the uber... Are oh, the uniques? Are they called these? Yeah, I think these are the uniques. Have four, I believe. But these are kind of like specialists because they are such high tier items. So I've got lucky here. of have 7 chance to gain 11 percent increased damage for four seconds lucky hit up to a five percent chance to restore 5.5 primary resource also lucky hit up to eight percent chance so this is like a bit of a crazy item i don't know how i feel about this item because it's kind of like lending to the old school uh the old sort of methodology of making the items but it's kind of fun in its own unique way we will have to keep an eye on the unique items moving forward but as you can see, yeah, it's just like the stats are very easy to understand. 88 maximum life gives you 88 extra life. 4.5 healing received, which will apply to portions, life steal, etc. Armor, yeah, again, nice roll on the armor. And um, a legendary passive damage in elite enemy grabs me a barrier, absorbing up to 1,144 damage, which is very, very good and very useful. So, what do I mean about? sort of the general loot changes which is good because now we can sort of look at the pants here and we can go well do we want the extra armor or do we prefer the flat core stat of dexterity um some items have crit so now it's like do i just stack ones that have got plus crit on and the more visceral choices do you want to go for more core stat more fun stuff i mean generally speaking I've generally been going more so for dexterity stacking as much as humanly possible in gems on gear and then sort of transferring the passives over. But I do generally feel when you get items now, you can sort of look at them and I'm just instantly going, ooh, and now I'm sort of arguing myself over, you know, which item do I think's better? And it, it really does feel now like before I was just confused I'd see two items, I'd be like, fuck me, which is better? And I'd have no idea, but now it's, like, meaningful. So I might have an item that's, like, plus 20% damage, um, an item that's plus 50 dex, and an item that's plus 20% crit. And it's like, you know, which do I want to lead into more? Another thing I will say now, with them having a lot more cost stats, we're getting a lot more core stat earlier on in the game, which is making our damage profile scale a lot better. And when you get items now, they do feel like they are increasing your power. I generally felt for the longest time that I was just sticking items in. When I went up a level, I was weak again. Then I'd get strong throughout the level. Level up again, feel weak. I never felt really like I was getting more powerful till sort of 60, 70 onwards. And to be honest with you, a lot of that were coming from the Paragon board. Now I genuinely feel like I don't think I would have had anywhere near this amount of decks last uh, last season. And the fact of the matter is having more cost that, you know, we could either spec into more resistance, more crit. Like there's just choices available, okay? So, like I said, it's going to be easy to understand affixes. Only sacred items now will appear in World Tier 3 and only ancestral items in World Tier 4. No sacreds uh, are in World Tier 4 anymore. Um, so basically, the higher up the World Tiers you go, you're going to guarantee that in World Tier 3 is going to be better than World Tier 2. World Tier 4 is going to be better than World Tier 3, basically. Total affixes on gears have been reduced. You get what you want more often. Now, what this means is in order to keep the power profile... Rather than having four affixes that are just horrible, like damage to frozen targets, damage to healthy, damage to vulnerable, damage to ranged, damage to people that like pancakes on a Tuesday morning. That's literally how bad it was. Uh, now you'll get like two or three. And to offset the power, when you get decks, now instead of getting like a really mediocre amount, like 10, 
Now you're getting 50 because he's compensating for two or three stats, which I think is so much better. And having a nice chunk of crit or a nice chunk of dexterity or a nice chunk of weapon damage just feels meaningful. And uh, you can feel it in the gameplay. It's very visceral. So legendary unique items will now be tradable across players, but not over uniques, which is just amazing. We can now trade stuff. So if you want to group farm, you know, I get a staff, you get a ball, let's swap it. Great stuff, love it. Level 95 level ninety-five plus enemies only drop capped 925 gear. And the cap is not being raised currently. But level 95 plus, you're only going to get the best leveled gear in the game. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be an uber unique. But if you get a yellow, an orange, uh, or, a, or a sort of white, white gold. It doesn't matter what you get, basically. It's going to be 925 after level 95. Enchanting gold costs will be capped and not increased exponentially forever. So although enchanting now is going to be very much, much more expensive because of the new economy system and whatnot, it is going to be capped at a point. So it's not going to keep exponentially rolling. So don't have to worry about farming an absolute boatload of gold. Forgotten souls will be able to be found from more sources, including whispers and occasionally elites. These are sort of... Um, mats and materials that you need for upgrading items and stuff and crude gems have been removed diamonds have had their resistance values improved gems across the board have been reworked codex of power changes now this one guys is a massive all right so the codex of power looking at it here so now your codex when you dismantle an item if an item has aspects of audacity on it and you disenchant it, you no longer have to pull, take the item and pull, pull the affix off it where you can only use it once. So if you remember last season, if you got a legendary bow or, or a chest piece and it had a great passive on, it was really good for your class, you could pull it off the item and then put it on your upgraded item. But then... If you didn't get the passive again from another item, you couldn't sort of pass it on a third time. It wouldn't let you. It'd just be like, nah, you've already passed on this aspect. Sorry, better luck next time. The way it works now, uh, I don't think I can actually show you unless I farm an item. There's going to have a passive on. Let's see if we can uh, grab an item here just to show you. Let's just see if we can indeed get an affix looted here. Let's have a look. Oh, sugar. My bad. We'll indeed try that one again. We might be better off going up here, actually. Deeds of hatred. The PvP zone. Uh, collect cinders. Probably better off going to this zone. Um, which is closer actually that one isn't possibly this one and I've got to say one major thing whilst we've got to farm an item here the major 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 takeaway for me this feels like blizzard of old this feels like a big W for Blizzard and it really has uh, taken me back to when Blizzard was sort of the best. They made the best games and this patch feels like such a W. It's unreal. It's a massive, massive overhaul. Like, I think people are not really keyed into how big of a change this currently is. And there's other soul changes as well, which you will discover, uh, disclose and show you. So, just whilst we found this item,
Gonna blow these up. And hopefully we will get an item in a moment with an affix on it. So I can talk about the code exchanges. Maybe I should have been a little bit more prepared and perhaps had an item ready for this. But we have just picked up another item here, which is uh, another big change to the season, which I do want to talk about as well. So that's going to be a bonus. Let's just have a look here at our items. We've not got one with an affix on currently. I was kind of hoping to show you the symbol, but with the power of video editing, I can probably grab one here for you. And we could just sort of skip over. And, uh, Come back to it as a whole. Very unscripted video, this, but I, I, I had to talk about it. Like, honestly, like, I had no intention of making any Diablo 4 content. But after playing this season, I'm like kind of in love with the game again. And um, it really has tickled a part of me that needed tickling. Scratched an itch. It's been there for such a long time. And I'm so happy that it has. And I think this is just the beginning for Diablo 4 now. And it kind of feels like it's definitely got its own sort of defined personality and place in the gaming space now. And I do feel now that not only is it very casual friendly, which is what Diablo sort of three onwards has been known for. But I also feel now it's got that easy to play, hard to master mentality, uh, which is very, very hard to pull off in a game like this. But I think they have managed it. So we are about to max out. So whilst we're here talking about the hell side, Hell tides have been vastly improved. So no longer do you get all the little quests and the caravans and whatnot. And now we get this bar, which is here. Now when this sort of um, demon bar fills all the way up, it is going to launch sort of a boss mechanic. And those said bosses are the ones that kind of had the great loot and whatnot. Rather than just getting it from handing in the cinders and sort of doing the group quests and the group sort of mechanics that were in areas which are just doing the caravans and the other weird stuff like for me wasn't great i just tend to run past them there we are helltide harbinger as you can see i've just got an overshield but it's plastered an elite so hopefully we're going to set this guy down here there we go and the loot drops from these and once they're full you'll see now that better spawns will come for a temporary amount of time and then it will reset so you can refarm but as you can see the density has increased we're now getting succubus another helltide harbinger the difficulty is increasing and let me look at the pack density it's so much more fun to do these areas now uh, it's massive change And it is so much more fun. The rewards you get. And this is tied in to the new seasonal mechanic as well. Which is the Iron Wolves, is it? Are they called? There's something Wolves. I think they're the Iron Wolves. I'll just have to double check that. Well, basically, the more... Look, so there we got a Wolf Emblem. So the more... Um, sort of farming we do... Not only does it increase the difficulty and the loot drops and whatnot, but we also get currency that we can then trade in at a reputation vendor for additional items. So we are full here. So let's just dump out a few bits and bats and see if we can get an item with an affix on it. 
it's not looking like we can to be fair which is a bit sad but nevertheless so the new mechanic which is they're just called the wolves i believe but there should be a vendor iron wolves encampment yes it is the iron wolves when you do hell tides now not only do you get better drops but you can also come to the iron wolf build commander and as you can see because we're slaying the hell tide zones and we're getting wolves on her we can now unlock these wonderful new items which are some nice passives some nice aspects uh sacred unique reputation cash uh a nice banner uh unspeakable gods reputation cash there's quite a lot of nice little things in here also some cosmetics for our horses some cosmetics for our character which are unique to this as well so we are going to go back to town now i'm just going to discuss why and a few more reasons why this season's great so we were talking about the the aspects sort of the new aspect system okay so not only do we have the codex of power where our aspects now get stored even when we destroy a piece of gear they appear in here and we can use them for the rest of our diablo 4 journey in season 4 they're now separated into these wonderful defensive offensive resource utility mobility sections you can also search now there's a search box so if it's our barrage maybe and we go on all there you go so barrage is the spell i'm using barrage arrows now pierce one enemy and there's a 60 percent increase and now i'm not entirely sure what the 7 out of 16 means if that's oh so it's rank 7 out of 16 so we can get a rank 16 version of this so basically what happens is when you take an aspect you get a rank of it so i'm at rank 7 now but if i loot a rank 10 and dismantle it it'll boost my aspect in my inventory which is great but the best thing about this season these new tempering recipes so we have tempering recipes as well as aspects your aspects are your big sort of changes to your spells and whatnot tempering recipes now these are these are very interesting all right so weapons for instance so these are a little bit more universal across all the classes so elemental surge for instance i've been using a lot it's very very interesting so it has a chance look here up to five percent chance to deal three to five hundred physical three to five hundred fire 3 to 500 lightning, 3 to 500 cold. Now, it will pick one of those and apply it to the weapon when you temper it. Now, it also affects caltrops, these offensive ones, defensive. Some are, some are class specific, like this is a rare one, rogue recovery, uh, where I get healing for, for doing flurry. Plus one to cipher strikes, or plus one to mend obscurity. Worldly endurance, I can get a chance at one of those three. So you get a chance at rolling these things that you pick up. You know, if you want to be more defensive, pick something. If you want to be more offensive, there's a lot of options available. Now, when we do go to the blacksmith, and we dismantle items, anything that's imprinted, or on a legendary. So here we go. Ah, just in the nick of time. So if we look here, we can see this little icon in the top right. Now, this is telling me that we don't actually currently have that aspect. So, if we just go all items, so you used to do all items, and it used to just take the yellows, the blues, the whites, and it used to leave the legendaries. Now, the reason why it left the legendaries was because it wanted you to go to the other vendor 
set, set the aspect off the item and reuse it. Now, we just vendor all items. Aspect of Noxious Eyes has been added to the Codex of Power. And there you go. We've now got that aspect. But the other great thing is tempering. So tempering, like I said, we've got our categories. We've got weapons, offensive, defensive, resource, mobility, utility. So under weapons, we've got elemental surge. Okay. So I'm going to show you how this works now. So we pick elemental surge. Take our weapon. It costs iron chunks and veil crystals. We're going to temper the item. You get this wonderful animation. A lot to a kin, sort of, um, like Lost Ark. And now we have a 40% chance to deal 950 poison damage out of a possible roll of 600 to 1,000. So that is fantastic. And as simple as that, we now have that on the weapon. So that's weapon tempering in a nutshell. And also we have the Codex of Power. Where we can not only enchant items... So enchanting's also new this season. So this is what you generally used to do from past seasons. You put the item in, you pick something from the Codex of Power, and these are all our looted aspects. Um, so what have we got in it currently? Rick Shape and Barrage. So we've got the aspects on it we want currently, so we're not gonna do that. But we also have this new feature called the enchanting items as well, which is amazing. So we can put an item in. So, we're loving dexterity. So, the uh, the stats on the item are dex, maximum health, and crit damage. So, I'm all about that glass cannon life. So, we're going to take the health, and we're going to enchant. So, there we have a chance at getting 24, ba 24 life on hit back, which is very, very good for survivability. We can roll 235 maximum health or no change. So, we can roll again. Oh, we've actually not got enough money. So, sadly, I will not be able to show you. But you can check for possible affixes. Um, so, you don't, like, just waste your time. So, if you click this button here, it will tell you that if we re-roll any stat on this, we have a chance at maximum life. Life on hit, plus two energy on kill. A flat 20 to 30 damage increase or 3 to 5 percent resource cost reduction. So you can spec loads of your gear towards cost reduction, loads of your gear towards just pure damage, pure defense, pure crit. Like the options are now endless with enchanting, imprinting of aspects, and the new weapon tempering which I feel are just absolutely amazing. So, greater affixes now. These are the most powerful affixes in the game. And they can now drop with up to a 1.5 times the value of others in max roll. So, your most potent affixes on items now can roll a hell of a lot higher as well. So, we're talking dexterity can roll way higher than it ever has done in the past which is absolutely amazing master working you can now upgrade your affixes by 12 ranks most rank upgrades will upgrade all affixes slightly every four ranks one effect affix is massively upgraded so the master working there's a lot of stuff that i'm not fully into with it yet but there's also a new so before, just before I carry on with this, like I said, it's unscripted, so forgive me if I'm jumping around a little bit. So the weapon tempering, this is one we've just looted from being out and about in the world. So this is another one, natural finesse. Now, if we already have this um, temper in our inventory, and this is a better version of it, all this will simply do is upgrade it. The are account bounds, you can use them on multiple characters. And this one obviously gives me a chance either a 26 to 35 increased damage, 41 to 55 percent damage to crowd controlled enemies, 57 to 75 damage to close enemies, 82 percent to 105 damage to distant enemies. So if I like any of them stats, I can now temper it 
onto a piece of gear, onto a weapon. And all you simply do when you get these manuals is right click them. And there you go. We've learned the recipe and it's that simple. Anything breaks. The gem system in general has had a massive overhaul. A lot more akin to Diablo 3. We now get dex, strength, in stamina on our gems. Um, critical strike damage. Uh, resist all has been vastly increased. The gems across the board are massively better. And also other things. So we talked about, so the gems have been completely reworked. Gems also now, you don't get decent gems to level 55 really. The gem system really comes into play at level 55. You can now enchant gear or sort of shift stats around. We've got tempering, which adds cool new affixes that greatly increase your power. We're getting more core stat. Items are easier to identify and switch around. We feel more powerful. I haven't what, what I haven't touched on is the XP in general and leveling feels a lot smoother. You do feel like XP flows at a much more consistent rate. You level up a lot quicker and it doesn't feel laborious anymore. It's quite enjoyable and quite smooth. It's not too fast, it's not too slow. I think it's in quite a good spot. All your waypoints and whatnot from past seasons now are saved and open on the map. You've still got your strongholds to unlock. You've still got dungeons uh, that you can go in and, and farm af af uh, aspects if you want. They've also added something late game which is massive called the pit where the pit itself is not only a great challenge for players to push themselves and test the builds in all the glory the pit goes from level 1 to level 200 um, you can also get something from them called Stygian Stones which when used will summon uber bosses in the pit it's also a great place to farm those masterworking materials to really refine your build and your items late game. And also, the pit itself does go from level 1 to level 200. And people are saying that literally, sort of level 125 onwards, it's just absolutely insane difficulty and a real treat for people who love to push those difficulty levels. And I'm only just scratching the surface of what has been added this season. But I tell you now, one thing's for certain, Diablo 4 is back. And this, for me, is only the beginning. If you've enjoyed today's video and content, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Drop me a comment in the comment box below. And if you do like what we do here on the channel, consider subscribing and ringing the post notification bell ticking the one with all written next to it so you get notified of all my future content and uh, let me know if you've tried season four and what your thoughts and feelings on it are and i'm really happy with it and i'm going to be making more diablo 4 content moving forward with all that out of the way i bid you farewell and i'll see you guys in the next one